finally, in this small final unit of this lecture, I want to demonstrate to you how tracking can be incorporated in the wider context of um, tasks that have to be solved um, in self-driving perception systems. And that's why I called it holistic scene understanding. To motivate this a little bit, in order to understand traffic scenes, it's not sufficient to just detect lanes. Maybe it's sufficient to detect lanes for such uh, highway situations here, where your main task is to do lane keeping. But if you want to understand a complicated intersection from a lane detector's perspective, as illustrated here, that's really impossible. So you need to um, uh, fuse all kinds of cues in order to obtain a complete and holistic understanding, such as you know, where are the vehicles, where are they going, um, of course, also where are the lanes and the road, um, where are the buildings, where is the sky, where are the vanishing points. Only if you consider all of these, then you get a holistic understanding of the scene. So fusing multiple cues leads to more robust estimates. And in the work I'm going to show you, um, we try to fuse information from all of these uh, aspects of the scene and tracking is one of them. So first, let's because I'm not gonna, gonna go into much of the technical details of this work, um, I'm gonna show you first a simple example of sensor fusion with just two measurements. Suppose we are given an object detection by two sensors, let's say camera and LiDAR, and let X denote the unknown object location, and let uh, C1 and C2 be noisy measurements of the camera and LiDAR. The posterior probability distribution over the object location can be computed using Bayes' law. So P of X given C1 and C2, these two noisy measurements can be written as P of C1 uh, and C2 given X times P of X over P, uh, C1 and uh, C2. Um, and this is uh, proportional to um, um, P of C1 given X and P of C2 given X and P of X if we assume that these two measurements are independent, which often is also not the case. But this is a way of formulating sensor fusion. So further assuming a uniform, uh, uninformative prior, we obtain um, this expression here because this term here um, is dropped if we don't know anything about um, the prior, uh, the location of the object a priori. So this is a simple way of fusing information from either different sensors or from different detectors from the same sensor. And that's what we're trying to do here now to integrate information from all aspects of the scene. So the goal is to infer from a short stereo video sequence in this project that we called 3D traffic scene understanding from movable platforms. So we wanna infer from short stereo video sequences. So no maps, no LiDAR here the topology and geometry of the scene, semantic information such as the traffic situation, the traffic pattern that's currently occurring, what's the state of the traffic lights. Without observing the traffic lights, we can figure that out because we see how things are moving and uh, generate a probabilistic generative model of urban uh, scenes fusing many different cues. And the advantage of this is um, that we, um, exploit a lot of we can exploit a lot of prior knowledge we know that intersections typically have a certain geometry and therefore it's it's much more likely that objects um, follow certain trajectories and we know for this particular sequence here that this has been captured in Europe so it's right-handed traffic and so forth and so we're we're going to formulate this in a complex probabilistic graphical model which is illustrated here at the high level um, so this is a Bayesian network that you can see here, and it comprises observations of the scene flow and the occupancy and some semantic labels and vanishing points. But also it comprises these tracklets here, which is kind of a hidden Markov model inside that big Bayesian network where we're trying to predict the state of each individual vehicle with respect to the jointly inferred situation, the scene, right? 
And so we are, we are basically uh, solving this using inference techniques in graphical models. And this is um, a result from this model. You can see the input sequence here. This is just a monocular sequence. And at the bottom, you can see the situation that is inferred. Um, you can see um, how likely it is that certain objects move in certain directions and you can see how this relates to the overall traffic situation. And this is really a challenging problem because we're just having this monocular uh, image sequence here and uh, measuring distances is really hard. But by observing that vehicles move from left to right, or right to left, and by, by putting them into context with a certain traffic situation, we can narrow down this uncertainty. So this is the advantage of holistic modeling. Another way of integrating additional information into the tracking problem is to use maps, as has been done in PNP, net, perception and prediction with tracking in the loop at CVPR 2020. And uh, the idea here is to use HD maps in combination with LiDAR to support the object detector and the tracker and to do joint perception tracking and motion forecasting um, as, or trajectory estimation. Of course, um, once you have tracked objects then uh, and you have a good motion model, then it becomes much easier for you to forecast the motion of an object into the future. And that's directly relevant to the behavior modeling stage that follows the prediction stage and the planner stage that uh, has to execute the behavior plans that have been determined. And then finally, I want to show you Argoverse, which is um, a recent data set um, for 3D tracking and forecasting with rich maps. We introduced a data set for 3D tracking and forecasting with rich maps. And rich maps means HD maps that is publicly released for autonomous driving. And the data set contains sequences of LiDAR measurements and RGB video, as well as uh, accurate localization. So this is a data set that nowadays is frequently used for um, evaluating uh, tracking and motion prediction, motion forecasting techniques. Here's the link to the website with leaderboards and more. That's all for today. In summary, we've seen that object tracking requires detection, association, and filtering and that precise knowledge of the observation model or the motion model can improve tracking, right? If we have a motion model, like we, we have a constant velocity motion model, and that's actually a motion model that's suitable for the observations that we make, then of course, we can make very precise predictions with that. Offline tracking requires f future observations. So the focus in self-driving is, of course, on online tracking. Filtering is the task of estimating the state given a sequence of observations. And the base filter comprises two steps, prediction and correction. The Kalman filter is a special case, a Gauss linear case of the base filter with a closed form solution. And frame to frame association can be solved using bipartite graph matching while multi-frame tracking can be formulated as a min cost flow problem. Multi-object tracking accuracy, or short MOTA, is often used to evaluate performance and joint estimation of object tracks and scene layout can help robustify things and improve performance.